the orchard up on Salmon Creek goes fallow. Oh no. An orphan riding horseback comes to town. We don't know yet. It's a nightmare. But that's about to be made quite clear. The air takes on the smell. What's that on Hooper's Hill? Looking down at Lulu. Welcome to Lulu. It's like he's been floating in outer space and his muscles have melted. His tongue is sandpaper. He's sweated through the mattress. He's back to life with a gasp. The trailer on the windy side of the south end of the valley. A string of spittle from the mouth of Tamara Tillman on the bed beside him. The flapping of her soft palate. He nudges her. Twice. Nothing. The boy is curled up under a beach towel on the futon. He's outgrown his old sleeping place, so his feet dangle off the armrest, scratching at the door. The house cat Mookie is not supposed to be outside. He finds the fridge and the pantry are bare. The birds don't sing. The truck doesn't start. Brownie double knots his boots. He goes out on foot for sustenance. Brownie. It's Monday morning. Must have tied one off pretty good the night before because my brain's all so. <clears throat> Go down to the diner. Try to get me some hillbilly food. Uh, that's what I call biscuits and gravy to soak it up. And the whole walk down, there's... Uh, stinky, man. Just stinky outside. Smells bad. Bad smell, like uh, batteries or chemicals or... Um, well, you know, stinky. And it's like the rapture happened. And I was the only bad guy or... Everybody's catching up on their beauty sleep or something. Until I go up to the diner and it's, it's crazy. It's the most full I've ever seen it. And anybody I know, I mean, these guys all looking the exact same. Like construction foremans or what is it? You know, plaid shirts, hard hats. Not one of them saying a word. Just chewing on waffles chewing in time like a music rhythm chewing all on waffles and that creeps me and it sounds gross so I kind of back out of the room like never mind they all look at me and they just wait for me to go and there is not one single car in the parking lot okay so now my stomach's going crazy and downtown's like a ghost town, like zero people. Now I got the heebie-jeebies all bad and I'm about to chalk it up to a loss, go be hungry back home. I run into Mike from the hardware store. He looks like he had too much cough syrup. I say, Mike, do you have too much cough syrup or what? I say, Mike, where is everybody? He says, I don't remember. I say, you smell that? He say, smell bad, like chemicals or battery. I say, you on your way to open up? He said, yes, so. So I walk up with Mike, and we round the corner off Pine on Avenue C, and we look up on Hooper's Hill, and we're like, whoa. What the hell that is? I say, Mike, what the hell that is? He say, 
I don't know. I say, you ever see that before? He say, no. I say, hey Mike, how often are you downtown? He say, every day, Brownie, every damn day. And I point that thing on the hill, and I say, that new? And he goes, brand spanking. It's like a prison, you know, or, or a big church, or, or a tower. Kind of like a castle uh, with a factory, and a, a power plant. Look, it wasn't small, all right? Big, tall things on it, and the biggest wall I ever heard of. And me and Mike, well, we don't think that thing was there even one day ago. I have what I consider a superpower. Only 26 others are said to have possessed it, claims of varying veracities. Some credible and well-supported, which I believe. Others outlandish, like the ramblings of one trapped between a Grimm's fairy tale and a sci-fi dystopia. These sound more like speculative fiction than my own experience. So I estimate more like 15 others share my superpower. I should say what it is. For reasons my limited science can't explain, I am able to see through very persistent illusions. The kind disseminated from Hooper's Hill in my mountain hometown when I was a kid. In four other locations, I've had the disturbing fortune to witness firsthand in my life's work. There's a spell I don't go under. My sleeper cell is comprised almost entirely of those who share my superpower. Maryland Blue, Manatee, my invisible friends. On Easter Sunday, the trouble arrived in Lulu. If you were to drive through without knowing what you were looking for, you would almost miss that something had gone sideways. Some slept through the day entirely. Eric Carnes meandered around his front lawn in his house slippers for hours. He has no recollection of this. Sally Langerhands drove to town, clipped her side view mirror on the mailbox, turning onto the main road. Downtown was cordoned off for the parade, but Sally drove through the barriers. She made a big loop around the western ridge and returned home to where her husband Rick slept on the kitchen floor. She remembers none of this. Sergeant O'Connell suited up for work. She made and poured eight individual cups of coffee, setting them side by side on the counter. She said something to Carl about the weather, but it came out just... weather we're having. Carl sat in the lazy boy staring at the floor. He simply repeated, weather we're having. When consciousness returns, the confusion is often attended with a rage from deep down. A reaction that demands explanations and the fingering of somebody to hold accountable for nobody's sure what absolutely maddening. Sergeant O'Connell directs her finger up the chain of influence. The mayor must have answers, no? Sergeant O'Connell is wary of the recently elected mayor. Mayor Minor is ambitious in the bad way, and he is behaving like a like a very, very suspicious mayor. Tamara Tillman spent Saturday nursing Friday's hangover. Sunday, she succumbed to the collective delirium, rising from bed periodically to knock on her own front door. She knocked from the inside from the living room, calling out the name of a friend she hasn't seen in several years. Wava, Wava Bauer, Wava Bauer, it's me, I know you're in there. She remembers none of this. On Monday, Tamara Tillman would have celebrated a rare two days sober, had she known the second day had passed at all. From her hiding place in the junkyard, where her son doesn't know to look, Smoking a doobie inside the belly of a defunct cement mixer. Tamara Tillman. Everybody's been, like, married once, 
but now they're married to the other one. I used to live on this side of the street. Now I actually live on this side of the street. Like, swing your partner. do si do So, like, I look at Marianne O'Connell and Bobby Trout, and they, like, they were the bells of the balls. Like, they deserve something. Like, thanks. I'm a doctor now. Now I'm the law around here. Bang, bang. Do I sound bitter? See, I got a bad wreck. Spring of 09 on the 97. Broken back. Ruined my legs. Bit clean through my lip. Start down a long road to so-called recovery. So I needed help. And I know I'm not like one of the gals or whatever, but I really needed O'Connell to be a good cop and Trout to be a good doctor. And they weren't get run down for what they're trying to tell me is a painkiller problem, I say, yes, I do have a painkiller problem. I need painkillers. Have you ever been in pain like this? Have you ever tried to raise a family in this kind of pain? They don't even have kids. And Trout looks in her, like, little book, and she does blah, blah, run around, and I just got the sense that she loves this, loves seeing me like this, just like then, just like always. Love seeing my son lose his eyeball because I'm not in some stupid club. So I'll be considering other channels. I guess that's what it's come down to. Get me taken care of once and for all. Yeah, me and my man are working on all that as we speak.